Every single one of you has an intricate relationship with yourself, arguably the most important relationship you will ever have in your lifetime. It's fluid, ever-changing and complex, but so incredibly vital to every other relationship we encounter along the way. Self-love isn't just about how we perceive ourselves, it's about how we show up for ourselves every day so that we can show other people how best to treat us. Going on a journey to self-love is not always easy and it's not always fun. Unfortunately, it takes a lot of trial and error which can be really daunting, really frustrating and can make you feel like you're getting nowhere. Here's the thing. Self-love is not a destination, it is a state of being. It's defined by the ways that you treat yourself when you don't feel worthy of love. I'm not sure where to even start with a topic like this, but last year I went through something that I never thought I'd ever go through. Um, I haven't really talked about it too much on my channel, to be honest. I have moved past it. I'm actually so grateful for this happening. If it didn't happen the way that it happened, I don't think I would be in the place that I am today. I don't think I would care for myself and love myself the way that I do today. Essentially, last year I went through a breakup. The way that it happened, I can't believe I'm even telling you guys this. It's not because I'm trying to gain sympathy or trying to shade anyone or anything like that, but I do think it's important to the premise of this series and the whole concept of self-love that I'm going to be talking about. I kind of want to give you guys some background information on what actually happened to me so that you understand the challenges I faced, the things I had to go through the love that I had to pour into myself after this happened because of what happened. So we were in Paris and it was day three of the trip. Basically in less than one sentence, my entire life changed. Realized that the person that I thought I was gonna be spending the rest of my life with was going to leave my life forever. And that moment for me was transformative because I think deep down, I know this and I can't believe I'm admitting this, but when the sentence was said to me, my immediate reaction was actually relief. I felt like I'd known this for so long and having it confirmed to me was just like immediate relief. And then after that, obviously I went through the stages of grief because I was like, oh my goodness, like what am I going to do? I was with this person for so long. I had a whole life with them. I couldn't see my world without them in it that process for me was really really difficult considering we had an entire like three weeks left of the trip and it had happened on day three i had no one over there i had no family i had no friends i was just by myself trying to go through the realizations of not only my life changing but also i really battled in those first few days with my sense of self-worth and how i saw myself you know and i think most people experience this if you get broken up with you might understand that you really go through these feelings of am i not as great as i think i am or am i not as special and kind as i think i am why would someone want to throw that away it didn't take me long to realize that it has nothing to do with me and it has nothing to do with you if you've ever gone through something similar to this and it has everything to do with the other person and i think as crazy as this sounds you cannot take a breakup personally unless there's been some serious reason for this breakup and you've done someone really wrong. If someone's just not into you that way or they just don't see a life with you, I feel like you just have to detach from that introspection you get when you start spiraling about who you are as a person and whether you're good enough for that person and not helpful. And I think I caught myself pretty quickly doing that and I had to stop myself. I had to really look in the mirror and remind myself that this doesn't change how I've always viewed myself, which is someone who is kind and giving and a great partner. So I was going through so much, you guys, like those days in Paris were so transformative and I weirdly romanticized that part of my life because I really did step into a new chapter 
it all happened in Paris. We were going to go to Lyon to visit his family for a few weeks. But when we got there, I realized that I didn't want to stay. I didn't want to stay there. I didn't want to just kind of like pretend like everything was fine. I realized that I need to do something and I needed to do something now. So while I was on the train to Lyon, I booked a flight to London and then I was out the next day. I went to London for a week. And if you follow my Instagram, if you've been following me for a while, you may have even seen this trip. Obviously, I didn't speak about the breakup, but I spent a whole week in London and that week in London changed my life even more, if that's even possible, because I'm someone who experiences pretty bad travel anxiety. For me, booking that flight and getting myself from place to place in a city that I've never been to, know how to navigate was the biggest confidence boost for me and this is something i'm going to go into in this series is how to build confidence because there's actually a very specific thing that has led to my confidence and that is resilience and that's what this trip did for me it proved to me how strong i am and how resilient i am how can i get dumped in paris and then jump on a plane to london and have one of the best weeks of my life i walked around the city day and night i went to cafes by myself i went to bookstores by myself felt like i was in a movie and that feeling just has not really gone away since i left london coming home was difficult because that's when it all sinks in right like that's when the changes sink in that's when the realization hits you but i was lucky enough that i started my new life in a new city and i just was able to actually have no real reminder of anything and the healing that has taken place over the last six months I haven't just healed from what happened to me and the way that it happened but i've healed so much of my wounds i've learned to love myself in a way that i don't think i will ever be able to unlearn there are so many ways that we can conceptualize self-love and self-care there has been a lot of discourse around self-love and being gentle with yourself real self-love and self-care comes from a combination of both i'm pretty sure most people can agree with that i love making vlogs i have been making vlogs for years not really on youtube but on instagram and tiktok i realized recently that i feel like my intentions were lacking i wanted to create something beautiful for people to watch to document my life but there is so much more that I can do and say if I have a structure. This series is basically going to be a weekly vlog with a theme or with some sort of topic that I want to touch on. I saw a TikTok about a podcast called Date Yourself Instead, I think. Just shouting out this creator, I'll put their details here, gave me the idea for this video. I am going to be taking you through some of the realizations that I've had as someone who studied psychology, so I have a little bit of background knowledge on mental health, well-being, perspective shifts, mindset shifts, resources, tools, but also the things that I've experienced in my own life, physical and mental transformation, the lessons I've learned in the relationships that I've been in, to show you guys the kind of life that I live because I really think that self-love is a practice, it's a choice. You don't just wake up every day, feel great all the time. I have days where I make a choice and I don't like myself for making that choice and it is sometimes a struggle to pick myself back up and continue on loving myself and thinking highly of myself no matter whether I'm in a good place or a bad place, having a good day or a bad day. I'm really excited for this entire series of Thai video and I guess this one's kind of just a bit of an intro. Dating myself is obviously the title of this series but I think more importantly these videos are going to encapsulate the relationship that you can have with yourself, the things that you can do to strengthen the relationship you have with yourself which arguably is the most important relationship you will ever have in your entire life. And so through heartbreak we are the ones responsible for putting the pieces of our heart back together and sometimes through reconstructing its chambers we will find parts of ourselves that we forgot ever existed. Parts of us that didn't care what people thought, especially the part that craves love from any external force outside of ourselves. Through the creation of this video, I actually discovered some things about myself. Through making this series and being in touch with my creative side again, I felt very in tune with myself and what I actually want. And in a way, it's a good thing because I'm sitting here contemplating my entire life. I don't know if I've ever been this level of vulnerable on the internet before, but part of me feels really unhappy with the direction my life is going in. I know that I'm very driven, I'm very ambitious, but 
since I was a little girl, I've always been a creative. I've always been an artist. I've always loved the process of creating and it just feels so natural to me. I grew up doing music and visual arts. Now, as much as I love psychology, getting to this point in my life at almost 26 years old, I still feel like my true calling lies somewhere in that creative realm, in more of like the visual arts. When I started doing ceramics and making jewelry, I felt like everything just came together for me. It all felt so right and so real. Lockdown was just opportunity for me to explore those things. I didn't really have the fear because I had the space to do it. I didn't have the pressure to go to work during the day and come home and have this be a side hustle. I was treating it like my full-time job and my first launch of by Emmy, I sold out of all of my necklaces and all of my ceramic pieces and not only that but I was getting messages from my customers after they received everything like, raving about how amazing all the products were and how beautiful everything was I remember the first day that I launched by Emmy, I walked through the park in Sydney and I just bawled my eyes out I cried because I felt like I felt like this was a life that I could have for myself and I could make a living doing something that I genuinely love and I've never wanted to be rich I've never wanted to have a mansion by the sea I've never wanted any of that I've only ever wanted to be able to do what I love every single day and just make a living off of it even if it's not much there's no better feeling to me than getting to make YouTube videos and getting to draw and getting to paint and dress up, do my makeup, style my outfits I just this is one of those moments again where when you start your healing journey, when you really start to reflect on what it is that you actually want and what it is that you love, you have to face yourself because I feel like I'm going down a path that I don't know if I want to go down when it comes to my career. All I really want is to do the markets on the weekend, to have a cute little online store. I don't need to be making thousands a week, just enough to pay my rent and bills. I think that creating this specific episode of dating myself is the first step for me in actually starting to look at how I can really become a full-time artist and believe in myself enough that I can create the things I want to create. It's just been a really rough morning. I've just been feeling very lost, but not lost in the sense that I don't know what I want, lost in the sense that I do know what I want and it hurts because I'm not doing it. If you would like to support me and shop my artwork, head over to dreamystudios.com and you'll be able to see all of my products there.